Hey, what's up? Schnell, and I know I'm about a year and a half late, maybe a little bit more, but today, on a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog, we're going to be going over the new Wolves in the Throne Room record because I finally finished it three times. Yes, it took more than a year for me to finish this entire recording. It just didn't do it for me. And the thing is, like, to me, Wolves in the Throne Room created their magnum opus with their sophomore record, Two Hunters. I feel to this day that is their best release alongside Celestite, which is like their love letter to Tangerine Dream. It's their, like, synth ambient record. But, like, Primordial Arcadia, like, don't get me wrong, the songwriting's fantastic. And I get what they're going for. Like, the neurosis of black metal. This completely reminds me, like, if neurosis gave a shit about black metal, and I'm talking post- through Silver and Blood, Neurosis. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you know what? We'll start at Through Silver and Blood. Uh, no, post Through Silver and Blood, Neurosis. We'll start there. Just because Through Silver and Blood is... Yeah. We'll start after that. Because that's when people start to... You get some people, though, uh, I stopped listening to Neurosis when a storm that, a sun that never sets came out, and I understand why. I even, like, I, I was a fan until, like, given to the horizon, and then I kind of fell off, but, like, there's some badass songs on here, like Spirit of Lightning, uh, Primal Chasm, Gift of Fire. Masters of Rain and Storm, that's a good one, but, like, I remember when I first saw them live, it was, like, you know, a big deal, like, they had, like, a, you know, they made it into, like, a sort of ritual, it, it was, like, really neat and stuff, and it felt special because they weren't some blown out, you know, like, they, 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 had not, I think it was their second tour ever. Like, seriously, it was like, I remember it was real. Like, they did two shows. They did an all-age show, and they did a 21-up show. Because uh, that EP that has Hate Crystal on it had just came out. See, I don't even remember what that e EP's called, but that Hate Crystal song is bad ass. But... I'm not really counting this. My favorite Wolves in the Throne Room recording is their Live at Roadburn performance. It is just top shelf American black metal. It's just, yeah, them in their prime, pretty much. Because some of these songs, like I said, they kind of just drag on and on. And it just gets to the point where it's like, all right, I'd rather just listen to something a little bit more vicious. And even if I want to listen to something more like chill in the black metal realms, like I'm going to go for something else. Like there's so many choices, but like, you know, you obviously can't go wrong with the classics and stuff, but even like, you know, there's plenty of modern, like, that Northern Solitude record, I would rather listen to a thousand times in a row. But, I don't know, there was just something about this record. And, if you're a fan of Weakling, then you know where that logo is influenced from. I always liked that, though, you know, paying homage to the past. But... It's just, I don't know. You know, if you've never heard a Wolves in the Throne Room record, just this whole style of black metal 
it's just it comes off a little pretentious and i it just does I, there's no way around it but it didn't always come off like that like i'm telling you up until like right after two hunters that like that ep that time period i feel that's wolf in the throne room at their strongest like the 2005 demo is really good like that leads into uh the first record the crystals record but you can't go wrong with two hunters like if you're a fan of like emperor like it's like emperor with a u.s vibe to it like it's just to me you can't really go wrong with that record where this is i keep calling it bloated but that's what it sounds like it sounds extremely just bloated like there's just so much going on to where all i want is a simple like you know like 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 back in the old days of what was in the throne room where you know it's just blast beat for like six minutes it's just constant and you know Wolves in the Throne Room are one of those bands that get hate and have gotten hate since day one, and I never really understood. I kind of always liked that hippie black metal aesthetic they had, and seeing them live in the early days was, you know, like I said, it was a really cool thing because we had, I know I had only seen like photos of them playing like outside with a generator and like torches and shit, so like, you know, I was into it. That was something I thought was cool. And at the time, you know, it was like 2007, 2008. There wasn't really many bands, like, doing that, like, emperor-type thing in America. Like, because I remember when Two Hunters came out, it just, like, had this total, like, whoa, this sounds like really, like, heavy Scandinavian vibes, but there's, like, that bit of like weakling and Judas Iscariot like kind of thrown in there but like the way it works it's just very organic and just like the production was wasn't too like you know it didn't sound like it was recorded like in a fucking dungeon or something which sometimes I, I like when it's recorded in a dungeon but there's other times where, you know, like, you really want that, like, icy production. But, like, sometimes, you know, the dungeon might be a little bit too murky. And you end up getting that super, super raw demo recording, which is fine for a demo. But for a full length, if you're a band like Wolves in the Throne Room, where riffs are what most people are there for because the drumming kind of follows that Fenris quote like if you go back and I forget what edition of it, it, it's a reissue a CD reissue of Transylvanian Hunger Fenris is drunk and he's talking about the drum sound on the record and he's like, you know, it's fucking, like, black metal, like, the drums, they don't matter, they're just background, it's just like, and, like, I never really thought about it like that, like, especially with Dark Throne, like, knowing that, and then going back and listening to it, and knowing that the drums don't matter, like, throw the drums out the window and just listen to the riffs and the vocals, and it's, you know, that's, why that shit's classic but with the latest wolves in the throne room release i just felt like you know this was something Norote records would put out and i don't mean that in a bad way i just mean like it doesn't feel i mean like it kind of has a relapse vibe to it because relapse put it out but at the same time like it just feels extremely like, there was too many chefs in the kitchen when it came to the 
recording process. Like, there's just a lot going on. Um, I'm just seeing if, if there, like, who, if there's any guests on here or anything. I'm not really seeing any guests that, besides, like, I know Wolf in the Throne Room is Nathan and Aaron Weaver. And they have Cody Keyworth on vocals and guitar with uh, Golden Ald Hewen on bass with melodic vocals. And Yanya Burkis, synthesizer and acoustic guitar. But uh, Wolves in the Throne Room uses ESP guitars, Tasse cymbals, and orange amplifiers. I do like the art, like, the cover art and stuff, because it kind of, you know, shows you their sound through an image, but look at the cover of Two Hunters. It's like this, you know, it's Nathan Weaver, but, like, he's supposed to be this, like, you know, savage deity or deity, however you want to say that, like, and it's just this photo that's kind of open to interpretation, and you don't really know what exists within, like, you know, you just get that Wolves in the Throne Room weakling looking logo, and, you know, Two Hunters is one of those records, like, as soon as you put it on and you get past that ambient, like, intro, and Vastness and Sorrow kicks in, it's just, like, fuck yeah, I don't care, it's one of those records I, I like a lot, I always have. And I've honestly been putting off, just, it's taken me so long to finish this record. But, Wolves in the Throne Room, Primordial, I Arcadia. If you're a fan of, like, that whole Cascadian black metal sound, then obviously you're gonna like this. But, if you like black metal with a lot of outside sounds, but... Just, like I said, it's just a little too much at times. Like, it really feels like just neurosis if they cared about playing black metal. Pretty much that's what this sounds like to me personally. But Primordial Arcana, that could, you know, sound... The complete opposite to someone else and this might be the most beautiful slab of black metal you've ever heard how can black metal be beautiful well that's again in the eyes of the listener or ears i should say but if you're looking for something that's like you know <laughs> this isn't the wolves in the throne room release i would say to check out go check out Two hunters, two hunters, if you want more of that, just like, da, 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 you know, or just listen to Storm Keep. But yeah, I did a trade with somebody for this when it first came out. This was like pre ordered and shit. Yeah, but it, I'm sorry, it took forever to get to it. But yeah, it just didn't really do anything for me. I'm sorry, but. Again, it is worth checking out if you're a fan of Wolves in the Throne Room. But otherwise, you know, go check out Two Hunters and the Live at Row Burn recording. And there, you know, you'll hear that fire. But, as always, thanks for watching. You fucking rule. Hails. Mm -hmm.